On this episode, we welcome back actor, producer, and rocker Hugh Dillon. Hear him on the incredible story of Jeremy Renner's return after a near-fatal accident to once again rule as the mayor of Kingstown. That's next on Brio TV, the podcast. Hi, welcome to the podcast. I'm Bill Brio. It was just a year and a half ago that actor Jeremy Renner was crushed and nearly killed after being pinned by a seven-ton snowcat. This after he saved his young nephew from being run over by the same machine. Renner broke 38 bones and spent many months in recovery. That he still has legs and that they work is a medical miracle. Renner returns this month for the third season of The Mayor of Kingstown, a series co-created by my guest, Hugh Dillon. Hugh based the Paramount Plus drama about a tough prison city on his own hometown of Kingston, Ontario. That is where Dillon honed his singing skills, eventually forming the rock band Headstones, and they're still making music after 37 years. It's always fun reconnecting with this rolling headstone, who fans will remember from his Flashpoint days, and who also plays hard-nosed detective Ian Ferguson on The Mayor of Kingstown. He has quite a story to tell with this remarkable comeback of his friend and colleague, Renner, for a third season, which was pushed back due to the writers and actors strikes. And that was absolutely a break for Renner and company, as Dylan relates. Listen, man, congrats on uh, season three of Mayor of uh, Kingstown. And uh, the, I watched the first episode of the new season. Yeah, it is just just as intense and gripping as ever. Uh, and I love, uh, Hugh, that the opening shot, we see uh, the mayor's uh, legs. He's Renner is running. He's on his way to uh, another crime scene. And I guess that was intentional. Yes. Right. We want to see this guy in movement and that happens right away. Right. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing was, you know, we weren't trying to hide or cover anything. The whole thing was we're, we're built to make Jeremy Renner, um, you know, have a great season. That's what it was all about. And uh, we were just, there was, there was, there was never any, if it comes back, it's, it was always when, Right. Uh, well, it, it absolutely works. And I, I don't think there's another show on television where um, the main lead is seen in so much movement. He's always driving, racing, running one, 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 one crisis to another. Right. Yeah. It's uh, it's there right at the beginning. Um, and this must have been a, a, a crazy time. What was it like that first day back on set in season three after everything that had happened? Glorious. I mean, you know, we had worked crazy hard just to get there. And, you know, um, I'd go up and visit Jeremy and uh, talk to his mom and he was in a wheelchair and he was, um, you know, he wanted to do a Taylor share and said, you know, we're, we're doing everything in our power to protect Jeremy and, and make this work. And Renner wanted to do it. And then it was his mom who was like, you know, do you know what you're doing? You know, you've got to be take care of him and i was like i was just reassuring her it wasn't his agents it wasn't his managers it was him me and and val his mom and i was like i'm here i'm the, i've been here since season one i'm you know and they trusted me and then i knew that all i could really do was kind of help get these scripts into a place where they really rocked. And I knew it was an audience of one because I've come back from things. So uh, you need hope. And I knew that these scripts, if they're really exciting, as he reads them in his hospital bed, he will be inspired and he will, it'll take his mind out, off his pain and off his circumstance. And, and it kind of like a snowball, it will build on itself. And that's what we did. And, I was driven. I wanted this to work. I knew he wanted to do it. And I, um, he's a friend of mine. And um, it was just like blinders on for the entire year. And then with the writer's strike, 
and the actors strike, it pushed us into, okay, we're going to shoot in the winter time, which was, you know, it's the best of both worlds, but it is a double edged sword. It's like I had originally in, can, you know, conceived this show with Taylor to be a winter show. So I was like, oh, that's great. But it was harder for Jeremy because he's got titanium in his face and his legs and his rib cage. And, but the, good side of it was you know he did have more time to recover and then it was like all right we're going to get the pittsburgh penguins you know hockey um doctors and all of their rehab folks on this so we landed in pittsburgh with you know you know the um every kind of modern technological marvel you could ask for in terms of um rehabbing him and um it's like an athlete he's like you know he's the gretzky on our team and um <laughs> and then everybody everybody was so you know it takes a village everybody was there for him and you know we adjusted the schedule for him and um i'd go and you know whatever he needed and he knew that and and that kind of support helped him. And uh, my whole goal was, you know, you were going to make it to May and we we're going to look at each other and say, we did it because it was difficult early on. And then we got to May last week in New York City and had the um, and we watched the show with an audience and it was exceptional billboards all over Times Square and he feels great. And his mom and his and his daughter are excited and he's he's um he's well on his way well it, it's incredible you watching it, it you have no hint uh as a viewer that this man was uh, nearly crushed and killed in a, a snowplow accident he is physical throughout the first episode there's a let scene. me tell you something this is the yep. best and most important transformation of any actor i've ever seen and i am a fan of cinema since De Niro and Raging Bull. You know, that was a feat, what he did yeah. in Raging Bull. What Renner has done to come back and play this character, it's I saw it with my own eyes and then I see it on film. And also I have the luxury of acting with him in the scenes yeah. and, and writing. And so some of those scenes that I wrote in episode eight, to see him because I knew where he started from, you know, and it was not, um, he was broken. And it is, it is the, it's, you know, he's, he exists in a state of grace that is just a joy to witness. Yeah, it, it is stunning. And there's a scene early on where he has to take matters into his own hands physically, literally. And um, it's a very physical scene. It's a beat down and yeah. I don't know how I don't know how you did it with doubles or I don't know. there wasn't any doubles. He did his own stunts. And that that wow. was one of those things, because I was in that scene and then I I was out of it because I was in the car and then I went and stood by the monitors and we all thought, oh, the stuntman is going to come in. But that was the, the turning point for him because he didn't call for stuntman. He just went and completed the scene and yeah. he knew he was back. And we all there were tears at the monitors because and just everybody stopped for a minute, like a little celebration because it was like jesus christ he did it he did it that was not in the script that was not in the cards we had stuntmen standing by and he played that scene he jumped like three feet you know the thing is is as we learned how to negotiate his um what he could and couldn't do he could do that ship then we learned that he needs the next day off to recover because it's, right. it does a number on his um, rehab. Yeah. But he, that sent him, you know, that instilled him with confidence, that move. And he knew then for him, he, we knew he was back, but for him to do that, he was, he was, I'm back. I got this. And yeah. he, he was relentless. He would do his rehab every day. He'd do it between sets. He, bet between takes, he, he'd, he had a Pittsburgh Penguin guy show up at lunch, you know, and, wow. um, they work on his knees and you know he never ever complained amazing back in a minute with Hugh Dillon
What's new this month on Paramount Plus? Plenty, as usual, topped by the season three return of The Mayor of Kingstown. The tense drama stars Jeremy Renner as Mayor Mike McCluskey. This season, the Russian mob is after him. Good luck, Russian mob. Not even getting crushed by a snowplow could stop this guy, Renner. The series was created by Canadian actor-musician Hugh Dillon, who returns as a podcast guest in June. Also this month on Paramount+, Plus, don't miss the documentary Cindy Lauper, Let the Canary Sing. She was always way better than Madonna, I say. Plus, she sang the Pee Wee's Playhouse theme song. My goodness. Anyway, learn all about her meteoric rise to fame in the 1980s. Ah, I remember it well. Plus, for something really different, look out for my son Jeffrey, the Dahmer family tapes. This delicious, uh, this documentary features recordings between serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer and his father, Lionel. Finally, Transformers Earth Park. The original season two premiere is coming up and here's a chance we get to meet a new generation of Transformer robots. The first to be born on Earth. Weird Al Yankovic and Red Hot Chili Peppers bassist Flea are among the guest stars. And remember, there's a mountain of entertainment on Paramount Plus. Well, time once again to speak with Emily Gagne from Hollywood Suite. Emily, what do you got for us this month? Well, Bill, I've got some incredible series. I know that we're known for movies, but we actually have series, if you didn't know. And there's some great ones coming this month, including uh, Mr. Bates versus the Post Office. Have you heard of this series, Bill? Mr. Bates versus the Post Office? Yes. No, yes. no what's it about? It's about uh, the UK fight with the postal workers and the government and Toby Jones stars in it. It's it's a really incredible true story. Um, and if you know anything about it, I think you'll enjoy it. But if you don't know anything, it's just an interesting true story that I think is really going to captivate you. So nothing to do with Norman Bates. Norman Bates is not in it. No. All right. No, good. No. Okay. This is a different Bates. Uh, gotcha. A little bit less killing, you know, nice. um, but still a lot of drama. And it, it's coming to us at uh, the end of May, May 28th. There's going to be like a two night premiere, but you can also stream it if, if you're uh, more of that kind of person. All right. Well, another series. What else you got? Yeah, Until I Kill You is our other big series right now, and it um, is a world exclusive, so you can't watch it anywhere else. Oh. And it's a true true crime drama, so if you're into that, I think you're going to love it. I'm not going to tell you anymore because I don't want to spoil it in case you know the true story, but Until I Kill You, uh, our viewers are loving it, and I think potential viewers will love it too. Until I Kill You. Wow. I okay. know. Worldwide exclusive on Hollywood Suite starting right now. Fantastic. All right. Thanks, Emily. Thank you, Bill. Here he is again, Mayor of Kingstown's Hugh Dillon. Um, McCluskey is is awesome in this, and uh, Renner's a great actor. We knew that, but Fantastic. watch watching him this season, you know, and he's a it's, this is a character that keeps his emotions largely in check as he's putting out fires surrounding him. Um, but did you pick up and sense that having lived through this hellish experience that Renner had, had found another gear in terms of the emotional scenes? Yes, I think he has it anyway, because he's such an intuitive and instinctive actor. But I do feel like all of us are able to bring our experiences into any role and it bleeds a little bit into it. So, I mean, you know, there isn't anything overt that I could point, point to, but I I know that there is another um, there is another fine layer of empathy in that character that he would have brought to it yeah no it's it's quite a performance uh tell me while the pittsburgh uh physical staff the pittsburgh penguins team was there did you have a look at your own bees did you get you know did you get checked out i did yourself? i've got a shoulder that fucks with me now and again <laughs> Fuck, are you kidding me i'll take advantage of that yeah uh, and awesome. they love talking about they love talking about um hockey and they love the tragically hip and uh, and they, they, I said, I play in the head. So I was like, oh, that's on my playlist. They that's didn't know awesome. the band, but they knew a song. So, yeah, I, um, 
you know, that's one of the perks of being a producer. It's like, you know, when, when um, you can access that kind of uh, help, really. And I appreciate yeah. it. I had a shoulder that was bugging me. I'm getting up there and I just, and these that's guys great. came in and fixed it. Do you still play hockey? I do. I'm not as much as I used to, but I mean, I'm pretty physical playing in the headstone. So, and that is not like, we are not, uh, you know, sitting on a, on, on chairs playing Simon and Garfunkel song. <laughs> and, you know, and so, so, you know, I've thrown my shoulder out before and I jump into the crowd, you know, it's, um, you know, it is a very physical uh, rock and roll band. So uh, last no, summer no I had, I had, Weak my shoulder and it was just like oh wow this guy go i'll work on you and he fixed it that's great it's been yeah. 30 years of the headstones right you yeah, I mean, this yeah. is incredible good for you yeah. that's amazing yeah. that is awesome um i'm fascinated by this world and we've talked before and you explain much of it is based on your own hometown of kingston ontario which was also a prison town in many ways and that you knew the cops you played in many ways it it, it was yeah. a prison town still is yeah. i mean it's gentrified a bit now but when i was there there were nine penitentiaries my and i've told you this my my hockey coaches were cops they had guns on their ankles they'd leave them on right. the on the um benches but a lot of it has been americanized because taylor's my um partner and yeah. so it's yeah. like it's based in the states we pulled it to michigan because my uncle hugh who i'm named after was from there he's from grand rapids so Nice. You know, as the world and, and a lot of the characters are characters like I'm I named Ian after my friend Ian Goodfellow, who passed away when he was 27. And mm -hmm. he had some of the characters that I imbued into this guy. And, you know, he's always funny, super positive and um, and loyal to a fault. And the McCluskey and there was a hockey fight in season one that was taken right out of I played for the for um, the church athletic league, St. Joe's and me and the Mulroonies and the Callahans got into a, a fight with the other team, with the reps, with the coaches, with the parents that was taken right out of Kingston and um, yeah. put into season one. It's amazing. Uh, these characters, and of course we're talking about Taylor Sheridan, your co-creator on this series who has more shows on the air now than, uh, you know, Aaron God. Spelling, Aaron Spelling <laughs> in the eighties. Uh, yeah. It's, it's incredible. And we'll be back after this short message. Well, what's new this month on Super Channel? Well, giddy up for the 11th season of When Calls the Heart, found exclusively in Canada on Super Channel Heart and Home. There are, of course, many burning questions from last season's shocking finale. School teacher Elizabeth, Erin Krakow, she's saddled up with her Mountie man, Nathan Grant, played by former Brio TV podcast guest, Kevin McGarry. Can these two ride off into the sunset and still manage parenting obstacles, huh? There are plenty of other obstacles to unravel as Hope Valley heads into the 1920s. Hardys and McGarry's can look forward to 12 new season 11 episodes. And don't forget, all 111 binge-worthy past episodes are available on Super Channel On Demand. Remember, Super Channel and all Canadian service is available via most cable providers across the country, as well as streaming live and on demand with Amazon Prime Video channels and Apple TV+. Plus. You can also check out Super Channel Plus, available now on the Roku platform in Canada. more with Hugh Dillon. And, and, and tell me, I mean, you as the co-creator and producer and writer on this show, it's an amazing accomplishment, Hugh. Um, but it, it, I, I had an uncle who was a deputy sheriff at, at, in Toronto down in, at University Avenue, and he would give me summer mm -hmm. jobs. Uncle Eddie, Ed McCarroll, and mm -hmm. his friends were all either lawyers and judges or guys who would have to face them or need them. Like he knew yeah. 
both sides, right? You, you yeah. had the same, and, and Eddie knew good and bad and better than anybody I I know. I knew. Uh, yeah. but you, that insight is poured into this show, right? It is, 100%. Yes. Like, you, you knew some of the troublemakers and, and, and hung with them, right? I was involved in it at an early age. I don't go into it that much, but I had giant problems with drugs and alcohol. And I, you know, at one point I had left the country when I was 19. Um, you know, there were guns involved and I'd never been on a plane or, or outside of Ontario. And I had to leave. And, um, you know, it was very serious and very violent. And, um, you know, I grew up in this prison town. I mean, Paul Langlois, his dad, Paul Langlois from the hip, his dad was the gym teacher at KC. And he thought he, he was always, he's always been a sweetheart to me. And me and Paul played hockey together. And he was always, he's always kind of looked at me like you did it. It's like, I thought you were going to be in jail or be a biker or, you know, there were just, I was, I was not, um moving along this track bill i wasn't yeah. and i you know i've had some very good people to help me and i've lucky that my passion switched into music which really saved me and then ultimately into film and television well it, it, it's worked out pretty well uh, you <laughs> so congrats yes. on all of this but uh can you tell us any more about season three what to expect coming uh, forward there's been some cast uh, in and out obviously from season two i mean this is that it's you know it's 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 cinema this is these are 10 episodes but really they are feature film it's that kind of um that's what you're watching this isn't network television and um and it isn't written with algorithms or committees. These are conversations between real people. One of them is me and of the characters we knew and the things we want to see. And we're writing to our, for ourselves and we're writing for Renner. And, you know, it is, you know, there's headstone songs in it. There are, you know, it is, yeah. it is, I was brought up by my brother Jude who passed away this last year oh. by, um watching a connection yeah thank you but he had a huge influence he was you know 12 years older than me he taught me to listen to bob dylan and and the stones and leonard cohen and the doors and he brought me to movies like the french connection or you know the early um uh, Eastwood Westerns or even um, Dirty Harry for that matter. So this has that DNA in it. This is not, um, I am not um, interested in exploring anything that isn't authentic to me. Yeah, well, it sure is. Uh, and right down to details like, and Hugh, I have to tell you, I love that McCluskey drives around in a Lincoln town car, uh, you know, <laughs> the, the classic ride. And, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's not there anymore. Uh, obviously, that was a nice touch, right? Yes. Well, so many touches. I mean, like, you know, it depends who's watching it. You know, I can go back to Kingston and have certain people of a certain uh, age love the show because I got them to um, – there was an old sportscaster when I grew up named Max Jackson, and he used to sign off every single thing. Growing up in the 70s and 60s, anybody from Kingston would remember it. He would always say, if you don't play a sport, be one. And I, that always stayed with me, and I had that put into the show. You know, so, and the Lincoln was a big part of the show. It's just, there's so many, it's just a joy, Bill, to create this show and now to write on it and to act in it and to work with such, you know, from Diane Weiss to, to, to Jeremy Renner, <clears throat> to Taylor Handley, to Emma Laird, to, to Toby Bentifa, to, to Derek Webster, who plays Stevie. I love these, these folks, you know, we went to when Renner, um, just before we wrap, Renner got his mom and Ava, his daughter, and took us all to this, um, roller coaster amusement park and we all went my wife midori went and it was just like kids like your friends it was just such a going back to you know my birthday i was like it's like oh my god this was just a a hard year but a joy 
Yeah, well, it's reflected in it, and the occasionally more Canadians too, right? Rob Rob Stewart, I've seen on. Uh, oh, I got Town. um, I got um. Now that you ask, yeah, um, Jessica Steen was in Flashpoint. Oh, nice. I wrote a scene for her, and I wrote a scene because right. I knew she could play. She's on Homeland here, or Heartland, Homeland, yeah. Yeah. Heartland, <laughs> and um, Heartland, and I. It was a joy because she was always so good uh, to me on. Flashpoint, and I always um, liked her as a person, and she's been a friend for a long time. And sometimes it's hard because you know you got to get work visas, but she had an American work visa, so I wrote her in. You'll see her in episode eight, and you know things like that, or um, you know Andrew Lockington, who's who's done the score. He's an he's an incredible composer. He's Canadian. There are just little, you know, I. Um, I am always gunning to get more Canadian talent on the show. Oh, and I got, you know, there's a, there's a great Canadian band called the Headstones that I've gotten. I've heard of them. Yeah. Yeah. I got a couple <laughs> of songs of theirs on the show. You got a new album coming out? We do. We do. Okay. We just, we release a, a, an album every two years. I know. So we'll tour this summer and we enjoy it. We don't golf. And that's, so that's what we do <laughs> is we go out and rock this country. I'm a proud uh, Canadian rock and roller. Another great argument against golf. Hugh, listen, I know you got a lot of people to talk to. Thank you so much for your time. Continued success. Congratulations on the third season of Mayor of Kingstown and hope to talk to you again soon. Anytime, Billy, you've always been a, a great champion of, 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 of me and the project I've worked on. And I always respect your take on projects I don't work on. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. All right, Hugh, take care. Best of luck. All right. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks to the folks at Paramount Plus Canada for setting up this interview with Hugh Dillon. Thanks, as always, to our one-man production team, Phil Hong, for being the mayor of Brio TV. Give it up to BJ Del Conte, Paul Boudra, and all the Crispy Critters, as well as piano man Stephen Dudley, who many years ago recorded the music you hear on this podcast. Finally, thanks to you, listener. If you enjoyed this conversation, let us know with a like or a comment on Apple or Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts. I'm Bill Brio. Thanks for listening. 